How do you constructively deal with young children's challenging behaviors? Well, I'm Nicolene Peck, creator of Teaching Self-Government, a parenting system that is renowned all over the world, and that is what we are talking about today. So what does constructively really mean? Constructively means calmly and proactively, which is the opposite of taking their behaviors personally and reacting to them. Parents who react to their children don't help their children constructively solve their problems. Now, young children can sometimes be frustrating, and I realize that. And so sometimes we do take their behaviors personally or we get very frustrated. But it's super important that as parents, we focus on our calmness so that we can help our children solve their problems. So in this video, I'm going to share four things you can do to help your young child handle some of those challenging behaviors that you feel like just keep getting in the way of running the day the way you'd like. The first one is creating a family vision. Does your child, even if they're a young child, know who you are trying to become as a family? Do they see that your family is supposed to be united and happy and connected? Those are deliberate conversations that need to be talked about. In my Teaching Self-Government Parenting course on my website, teachingselfgovernment.com, I talk about how to create a family vision and how to help those young children buy in so that they care about who you're becoming as a family. If you've decided who you're trying to become as a family, then you can compare what's happening in the minute, which might not be so good, and the feeling associated with what's happening in the minute to the goal. Your family needs a goal. Even young children understand goals and can be motivated by them to the point where they will change their own behaviors of their own accord. Young children have a tendency to get distracted even more than older children. Because of that tendency to become distracted, it can be more difficult to make the corrections of those challenging behaviors really stick. So the thing you need to remember the most is to have a good connection with the child, which means look in their eyes, even touch them in a way. Maybe put your hand on their shoulder or put your hand on their face as you're talking to them. Make some sort of a connection. If you make a connection with them when you are teaching them a skill they need or when you are correcting a problem, then they feel the truth of it, especially if you're calm. In the Teaching Self-Government Parenting course, I teach four basic skills to children. These four skills take care of 99% of all behavioral problems. They are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, and disagreeing appropriately. Each one of these four basic skills has a skill set attached to it. For instance, to accept no answers, which is a vital skill for any person, no matter the age, what you do is you look at the person, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say okay or ask to disagree appropriately, and then drop the subject. So does your young child know how to do all four of those things? Do they know how to accept a no answer or criticism from you? If not, you're going to want to proactively teach that skill. That means teach it at a time when there hasn't been a problem. Practice it, role play it, have fun with it. In fact, at teachingselfgovernment.com, I have some children's books that teach these four basic skills to children. They're called London LeRae Says Okay, Porter Earns a Quarter, Big Win for Quinn, and Paige Takes the Stage. They're super fun, they rhyme, young children absolutely love them. So so go to teachingselfgovernment.com and you can find those there. But those skills, those four basic skills are a vital component to your young child learning to solve their problems. And some of the biggest problems that they're dealing with are these challenging behaviors. See, they're trying to get your attention or they're trying to be understood or they're trying to express that they feel unsure about what it is you're really asking them to do. And so that's a problem.
problem they have. And that leads to the anxiety, which then leads to these other challenging behaviors. Now I know some of the challenging behaviors are just because they're trying to control you. Well, we've got a skill for that too. It's called disagreeing appropriately. And there's a book that teaches that one as well. So be sure you learn that disagree appropriately skill and teach that one to your children too. The most important thing you can do to help your young child constructively deal with their challenging behaviors is to teach them the difference between what is calm and what is not calm. Do they know that? Even little two-year-old children, little toddlers can learn that. The other day I was talking with a father who recently was part of one of my trainings called a parenting mastery training. And at the parenting mastery training, he was concerned that his young two-year-old might not be able to do some of the skills. I assured him that they could. He went home and started proactively teaching these skills to all of his children, including the little two-year-old who had tantrums. Within just a couple of days, this father was on the phone with me saying, Nicoline, I cannot believe this. I have to tell you this huge success story. My daughter loves to go to bed. I know that's the opposite of most young children, but he said she loves to go to bed. She screams to go to bed, but we realized having her scream to get to bed was not a healthy thing. She needed to be able to be calm and talk about going to bed instead of having a big tantrum every single night. So we had talked to her about calmness and we explained to her that she needed to communicate calmly with us. Now at first she didn't, but they consistently held her to that calm conversation. After a little bit, she chose to say, I'm calm. She got calm and then they got to the room to put her to bed and her pacifier was not there. So then the little girl who was a little worried at first, who would normally be screaming and crying, looked at her father and mother and said, I'm calm, but I need my binky to go to bed but I'm gonna be calm. And the mother and father ran off to find the binky. They found it in the house, brought it back to the little girl, and she had stayed calm the whole time. He was elated. He said, Nicolene, we're just beginning with her, and she already understands the difference between being calm and not being calm. He was so excited. He said, this really does work, even for little toddlers. I can't believe we didn't have this for our other children. Young children want to be calm and be understood just like you want to be able to be calm and be understood too. And there is a way to have both. Because you've been watching this video, I would like to extend to you a free course. This course is called the Calm Parenting Toolkit. And there is a link to it right below this video. If you click on the link, it will take you to the Calm Parenting Toolkit where you can start learning the skills for calmness for yourself and for your child. And it's the first step in really mastering self-government for your family. So start there, click on that link below and get the help that you need to get your child on the road to self-mastery and conquering their challenging behaviors.